has ASRock had any problems with the X670 platform personally? AM5 and the recent cases of burning Ryzen CPUs. Welcome back to Computex 2023 and I stumbled into someone on the ASRock booth here and today is a bit of a Q&A day and I thought who better to ask about ASRock motherboard BIOSes than Wendell himself. Okay. So in my, in my experience, right, this is just me personally, I've noticed since X99, ASRock have really come a long way in yeah. terms of stability and just options and everything working seamlessly. But then I'm more on the performance side with the mainstream. You do a lot of server, however. So what's your opinions on the, I guess, evolution of BIOSes and, and different companies too? Well, I really like, so for like the Linux use case, uh, ASRock's BIOS generally is really good because they give you all the knobs and tunables, but also it seems like they actually test with Linux, so it doesn't generally do anything weird. And when it does do something weird, you can email them and generally they'll fix it. I mean, there's still bugs sometimes, and sometimes there's weird stuff that happens, and sometimes there's options that you, you toggle, they don't really do anything. But most of the time, it's really good. And uh, I like the overclocking options and the memory options as well. Um, the memory options with uh, the DDR5 platform, because it's like DDR5 has been a little, little, uh, little sketchy. It's been a little easier to get some of those things working. Especially with the secondary timings and the and see they got in the bus they got the real time optimizing so they can actually if you're experiencing issues you can lock those in, and then it'll just help with sometimes it can really help just get your even your XMP profiles working if the manufacturer has been a little bit too aggressive and for instance you've got maybe a bad bin CPU. Yeah, it it's kind of some of the memory training stuff is kind of darned if you do darned if you don't because. Okay, imagine the situation, you're a user, you buy a DDR5 memory, you plug it in, the computer doesn't turn on. Would you rather the computer doesn't turn on, turn on with good XMP profile settings or good auto train settings, or would you rather the computer turns on, but the, the performance isn't amazing? And it's because it's got those secondary timings where they really, really, really tried hard to get it working, when the reality was you probably just needed to flip around your dims or you might have touched the edge of your dim and gotten some contaminants on it, which is enough to throw off DDR5 sort of kind of these days. So it's like, oh, you clean your connector and you put it back and it's like, now it works. It's like, again, would you rather your computer just doesn't turn on or would you rather the, the timing? So you just ha it's something you have to check and people are not used to that. Yes. But there's another thing you and I have been invited to from here on in, and that's an overclocking, extreme overclocking event with uh, two of ASRock's performance team, and they also got input in the BIOS. So we are going to go head there right now, actually right after the sponsor spot. Woo! We're going to overclock Sapphire Rapids on ASRock's W790 workstation motherboard. We're going to hit beyond 7 gigahertz. Hopefully. It's over 6.9 gigahertz. This year's Computex was brought to you by ASRock and SCD Keys, bringing you a Windows 10 and 11 license for as little as $15 using that coupon code BFTYC. Links in description below. This right here is a W790 workstation motherboard, and today we're going to be overclocking 16 cores of Xeon goodness with Wendell from Level 1 Tech. Sapphire Rapids! Ah! And we are joined here by Splave and Nick, and they are from the ASRock performance team. And we're gonna be talking a little bit later as well on the BIOSes and doing a Q&A about what makes ASRock BIOSes not just stable, but also conservative. But before we talk about conservation, let's start overclocking this Xeon and seeing if we can break a world record. So this is kind of like the final test we're doing here. It's it's the uh, I guess the fluff and no buff yes. test. Seven gigahertz. Ah. <laughs> Where they're just saying uh, for the sake of it, they're just saying the CPU can go this high. But as soon as you put any sort of strenuous load on the CPU, we are going to get a blue screen. So now we're with the performance team after that overclocking event and we're going to ask some direct questions for mainly about ASRock's BIOSes and how that affects say AMD and Intel users 
if the BIOS is not right or what they do to make sure that their BIOS is running right in terms of getting a most stable experience for the end user. So now we've got a question for Splave and that is before we saw him doing the extreme overclocking, there's actually a really important role here and that is I believe you have a lot of input in directing the extreme overclocking abilities of motherboards to the BIOS team. Do you, do you want to explain a little bit more about that and how that process works? Uh, sure. So uh, ASRock has a AMD BIOS team, an Intel BIOS team, and pretty much they'll send me hardware uh, pretty early on and we will try to break it pretty much. Usually like a, like a six processors, you can kind of test the limits of each voltage and a lot die, but that's what engineering samples are for. <laughs> so um, they'll send me something and if I run into a problem that I think can be fixed, I'll mention, hey, can we do uh, a fix for this or a patch or is there a missing voltage maybe we need or Nick does a lot of that testing too on his side so we kind of will collaborate what his findings are with my findings and usually it's the same stuff so essentially you're breaking the hardware so the customers don't have to <laughs> yeah essentially um, limits like V core um, a lot of air testing like we test mostly on air and like your big shot is to take that processor on ln2 if it's good on air so most of our platform testing is done on air which is an entire different set of problems than the ln2 problems but some of them are linked so there is some crossover between the two next question is Let's go in a little bit deeper to the AMD side of things with X670. So you get the initial hardware and you get the engineering samples in, and then you said you test them and you test them thoroughly. So when you first got in the Ryzen uh, 7000 series CPUs, what were you finding there with those CPUs? Like what was the behavior you were finding and, and the limits and... Sure, so uh, on AMD side, with the 7000 series, um, pretty much uh, they reach a point pretty quickly where it's too hot to uh, to add any real frequency, and they they uh, there's a little less headroom on that side. Okay, um, I think around like one three five. Uh, over that, I didn't see really any sort of gain, especially on the 7950X versus the smaller one, just, just from the extra core heat. So my next question now is, ASRock, as a motherboard company, what is your main goal going forward from 2023, especially coming in with a lot of competition out there? What do you think is going to set you apart from everyone else? We aiming for the stability this year for, for sure. Yeah, as always. Yeah. So just max stability. Yes, yes, for sure. Yeah. That's all you want, guys, if you're buying a motherboard. <laughs> Third question now. What is ASRock's best selling series of motherboard? And I think the Pro RS of each generation has very good sales. Yeah. That's the entry level, like mainly the entry level board, yes? I think middle, middle and entry label. Yeah, they both have the, the pro eyes. Though my, my favorite motherboard is the Steel Legend series. What is your favorite series, personally? Uh, personally, I love OC Formula for sure. And also the Tai Chi, yeah, it's one of my favorite too. Uh, well, when there is an OC Formula made, I like that one. Um, but they've been making uh, the Aqua with two dims so it's better for memory overclocking and i pretty much always just use that or a tai chi okay. so fourth question has asrock had any problems with the x670 platform personally am5 and the recent cases of burning ryzen cpus so personally um with i don't have much experience with 3d uh chips because they're not great for overclocking in general um but 
ASRock has not had any socket burn issues like some of the other companies might have had. Fifth question, uh, what is the sweet spot amount of PCB layers for optimal memory speeds, especially versus price? So for instance, uh, six layers is better than four layers. You're gonna get better speeds when it comes to your memory speeds. Eight layers better than six, but you're going to get to a point somewhere where it just adds a lot more cost onto the PCB and you're not really getting a whole lot more performance. But I'm guessing there's somewhere in there, there's a sweet spot for that, so. Okay, when the DDR5 came out from the Z690 platform, and you will see that the eight layer PCB is, and also the six layer is better than four. Because before DDR4 is good, even, even four layer PCB is fine. But when DDR5 came out, you will need eight layers, six layers, even you need a better quality PCB like middle lows and low lows. So I would say uh, for Intel, six layer is fine. But for AMD, you will need like alias. Uh, tai, tai Chi is alias. Yes. OC formula uh, uh, is a alias, and, but the latest R core is like 12 layers. Yeah, so we try to improve the quality and ability like each generation. Sixth question comes from actually outside and from you guys in the comments. And this is schematics for end of life motherboards. Is there any plans to release these so users can rep repair their old motherboards themselves? So I think um, in general, probably not because many times, especially lately, uh, the newer chipset is and very limited features extra. Uh, are the only difference between, say, uh, Z690 or Z790 motherboard. So there's probably too much information would be shared uh, that's currently being used, even though it's EOL for the last generation. Seventh question is a personal one where I'm a mini ITX lover and I actually have noticed that mini ITX boards have extremely good VRM efficiency. However, what is the most efficient VRM ASRock has made to date? I think the 10 phases is the most efficient for the, for the RDA so far. Yeah, because the heat and balance. Yeah, eight, eight phases is, is too less, but 12 less is, it, it, is occupied too, too much rooms. I don't have enough rooms for that VIM. So I think 10 phases is better. So with this next question, we've got how much testing is done on a motherboard before it ships? Does it go through a stress testing process? And if so, how long is that process? And before each motherboard re release, it will take like six months. Like all the like EVT progress and the, the, the MP sample, it will take a lot of months. And also it takes a lot of process to do like internal test, whatever the compatibility test and also the memory QVO test and also a lot of basic function test. Yeah, it comes sometimes. Yeah, all the, all, the, all the tests will be, it's need like one month in, in our office, yeah, to be down. And then um, every revision, you kind of have to start over the testing all over. So um, every little fine tuning part, it's like square one, it's revision 101, try do everything over again. So it takes a lot of time. And yeah, and also, and when, uh, as you know, now we got a 790, right? But when, when the 790 came out, we also go back to update the, the old model, like 690. So when the model sold out, not, not, doesn't mean it's end. We need to keep updating the BIOS for the end users, for sure. This question is probably one that is going to be a juicy one, but a lot of people want to know this. And that is if you're running Expo or XMP profiles on your motherboard, is ASRock still covering that board for warranty if that user's running those memory kits? ASRock will always cover the warranty, whatever the profile you load. Yeah, so don't worry about that. And so that's wrapping up our Q&A series here with a Splave and Nick from the ASRock performance team. I hope you guys enjoyed this one, but there is one final question and that is, what product are you guys looking forward to personally that ASRock will be launching in the near future. For me personally, I'm actually really liking that Z790 Lightning. I thought that was really cool with a new sort of budget but enthusiast aligned motherboard. Being the upcoming Z790 Nova, yeah, it's our new series. You will see a lot of feature inside and also you will see the 6M.2 on, 
uh, on the board. So I think it's quite good for the users and the price will be, I think price is good. Yeah, we're good for the end users. Uh, I'm probably most interested in, I like the Intel GPUs. I'm, I'm cheering for them to be okay. successful. Uh, if that's this year or not, I'm not sure. But uh, yeah, I, I, I'm partial to that. I, I, I think they're cool. I literally just on this trip found some Mark A750 and 770s for a really good price. So I snapped them up. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much for your time. And we'll catch you guys in another tech video very soon. If, and also, if you have any questions for the, the guys here in the team, be sure to drop a comment down below. They read this stuff. They're always listening to feedback. They constantly want to improve their products and make the best motherboards, especially motherboards, possible for you guys. And with that aside, I'll catch you guys in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.